Data modules enable you to clean, transform, and enrich data, adding value to your analysis. In this video, you will learn how to create a data module, how to clean, transform, and enrich data, and how to create and use data groups. Data modules can use uploaded files, data servers, data sets, and other data modules as data sources. They're the source for data elements in dashboards, reports, explorations, and stories. Data elements are documented with comments and screen tips in the data module. Using built-in functions, data can be cleaned and transformed, enriching and extending data, and new data can be created using calculations. To start things, click Prepare Data, find the file, select it, click OK, and the data module window opens. If you want to change the name of the uploaded file that gets displayed, select it, click Properties, and change the label. Columns in the table are on the left side of the canvas. Data is displayed in the grid to the right. Names in the data module appear in the content you create. While you can change names and content, it's more efficient to change a name once in the data module. For example, let's change transaction date to just date. Row ID was created when the file was uploaded. Notice it's a lighter gray. Looking at its properties, it's marked hide from users and has an aggregation rule of count. You could use row ID in a visualization to get a row count after toggling hide from users off. Order is the number called out when a customer's coffee is ready for pickup. Since it's numeric, it was identified as a measure. Treating order as a measure doesn't make sense. Instead, it should be treated as an attribute. Adding up order numbers also doesn't make sense. The aggregation rule could be changed to none or count distinct depending on its intended use. It's a good practice to review usage and aggregation rules when creating a data module. You can examine table data in the grid view or by looking at a column's data members. Clicking on the right caret of the in-store indicator column expands a list showing unique values. This is a quick way to understand the scope of data in a table. The following shows how a group is created. Start by right-clicking the attribute the group will be based on. A group can be created that will pick up any remaining and future items. I'm going to keep the default name of group, and at the top, I'm going to keep the default name of the sales outlet group. Press create, the group gets created. Using the clean function is another method to enrich data. Start by right-clicking the in-store indicator. There are several transformations available trimming leading and trailing white space, converting to upper or lower case, extracting text using a substring function, replacing a value with a null, and replacing a null with a new value. This is an easy method to provide information that might help describe missing data. Notice that the data member null does not change as the physical data has not been changed. In the grid, the null is displayed as unknown. This is not a physical change and it can be easily reversed. Date and time transformations are done using split. Right click and select split. If I want to change the name of the new columns, I can do that here. Time columns can also be split in a similar fashion into hours, minutes, and seconds. Split is an extremely useful time-saving transformation. 
Filters can be created to manage data available for content. This is not intended to be a security filter controlling user access to data. How to implement row-level security will be covered in a separate video. This filter will limit data to downtown stores. Right-click the attribute and select Filter. A filter icon appears to the right of the column now, showing you that a filter has been set, and you can see in the grid the data is only for downtown. The final step is to save the data module. Documentation for IBM Cognos Analytics with Watson is available online. The video description below contains links for topics covered in this video. If you would like to try what was demonstrated in this video, you will find the data in the Samples folder in Team Content.